Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome to another lecture on anterior abdominal wall. So here, yeah, first of all, the layers of the anterior abdominal wall. The most outer layer is the skin, then superficial fascia. Then three important muscles, external oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle, and transversus epiglottis muscle. So after skin and superficial fascia, there are three important muscles there, but in case of abdomen, there is no deep fascia. Then here we can see fascia transversalis, extra peritoneal tissue or extra peritoneal connective tissue, and parietal peritoneum. So these eight layers of the anterior abdominal wall. So anterior abdominal wall, it has total eight layers. Uh, here in this picture, this picture is enough and it is showing all the layers of anterior abdominal wall, total 8 layers of the anterior abdominal wall. So among them, first of all, here this is the skin and after the skin, this is the superficial fascia, uh, which is also divided into two parts, so one of the superficial fatty layer, which is the fascia campers and another one is the membranous layer, which is the scarf of fascia. So first of all, skin and superficial fascia, but there is no deep fascia. And there, then three important muscles. So one is the external oblique muscle. This is the external oblique muscle. Then either to the external oblique, there is the internal oblique muscle. And in the side of the internal oblique, there is the another muscle, which is the transversus abdominis. And then here we can see the fascia transversalis. That means it's the fascia of the transversus abdominis muscle and after that extra peritoneal tissue and parietal peritoneum so these are the layers of the anterior abdominal wall so it is easy first of all skin and superficial fascia then three important group of the muscle and then three important structure so here in this picture we can see the external oblique muscle here we can see this is the external oblique muscle, this one and this one is the external oblique muscle and in the second picture here we can see this is the external oblique muscle and this external oblique muscle it has the muscular component which is formed by the muscle and aponeurotic portion here we can see this is the aponeurotic portion and it is from the rectus sheet with other two muscle which is the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle and there here we can see the internal oblique muscle this muscle is the internal oblique here we can see this is the internal oblique muscle so just inside the external oblique muscle here this is the in external oblique muscle so inside the external oblique muscle there is the internal oblique muscle and this muscle it lies just fibers are transverse so it is transverse the this muscle here we can see the fibers are just like this so this is called the transverse abdominis muscle and again see the muscles here here first of all the external oblique which lies most uh, superficial then internal oblique and then transverse abdominis muscle and here within the uh, rectus sheet there is important muscle which is the rectus abdominis muscle so again uh, the quick recap the layers of the abdominal wall and uh, after that we will discuss about the clinical significance of the anterior abdominal wall so the layers of anterior abdominal wall again this is the skin and the superficial fascia there is no deep fascia then the important group of the muscles external oblique muscle internal oblique muscle and transversus abdominis muscle then fascia transversalis which is the fascia of the transversus abdominis muscle then extra peritoneal connective tissue and parietal peritoneum now clinical importance of the anterior abdominal wall here we can see during abdominal surgery it is usually necessary to divide to enter into abdominal wall for purpose of different abdominal surgery and uh, this uh, division may be through the muscle or through the aponeurosis so this point is important that we can enter into the abdomen through the muscle or through the aponeurosis during midline laparotomy it is divided to the aponeurosis during the midline incision we 
have to divide the aponeurosis by two. When the other side, then the midline, we have to divide or we have to separate the muscles group of the anterior abdominal wall. So, reading entering into the abdomen during laparotomy, we have to divide either the aponeurosis or the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. This is all about the layers of the anterior abdominal wall. Thank you all.